In this lesson, we're going to improve the security of the configuration of your router. The way we're going to do that is eliminate the password. The password is the weakest link in any remote access. So we're going to get rid of that by using SSH keys. The key will allow us to access without a password and inherently make the router that much more secure. So let's take a look how this is all done. First of all, we have to go and get the putty at putty.org and install it. So I've already installed putty. Now you find the putty generator. So we come down here, scroll down to putty. Scroll down here, we'll find the generator right here. This generates key, key pairs. So we're going to generate an RSA key, because that's what Mikrotik likes. We're also going to generate a 8192 key, because that's the highest Mikrotik can go. So now we're going to go ahead and click on Generate a Key. I want to move the mouse across here to uh, generate some random key tokens. And now it's building the actual key. This does take a little bit of time, so be patient. It's probably going to take 15 to 30 seconds to generate this large key. And here we are, the key is finished. The key's been generated. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put a passphrase on my key. What that means is that anyone that gets a hold of my private key can't use it without this password. They call it a passphrase. So I'm going to put a passphrase on my key. You can run without a passphrase, but if somebody gets hold of your key, then it makes it easier for them to get in. So my passphrase is that, and I'll repeat it down here. Go back and look at my list up here. I want to save the private key. That's the next step. So I save my private key. I'm going to temporarily put it in my documents folder. It's not a good place, but that's just temporary. Now I'm going to call it the name of my router. That's the name of the router. And it's a private key, so I'm not going to say it's a key in the file name. Of course, the PPK will be a giveaway. So now I've saved the private key. If you notice, it's right here in my documents folder. You think the next step would be just save the public key and then you can copy the public key up here, right? But it doesn't work that way. For some reason, it doesn't work. I think it has to do with carriage returns or line feeds between Windows and Linux. So at any rate, what you have to do is first you have to create a file over here. Let's move this out of the way. I have to create an empty file. Call it a new file. And the new file is a text document. We have to rename it, same name, Lin91. I didn't put 9 on the other one, did I? Ah, there's always some human factor. So anyway, now Lin91.txt is my file name for my empty documents. Go ahead and change this too, because this gets confusing. Rename 91. Click away. OK, so now I have this thing labeled text. So we have to open this text file. And once we open it, we've got to paste this key string into it, this key string up here. So we left click, then right click, select all. We're going to paste all that into this text file. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to copy. Over here, I'm going to right click, I'm going to paste. And I'm going to save this. So now this Lin 91 text has the public key in it. So what I'm going to do now is rename this Lin 91 text because Microtech won't use it without extension. So I'm going to rename it. We'll make this instead of text, we'll call it pub. That's what Microtech expects. So now it's renamed. So you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, the next step now is to go ahead and we're in the file system here of Winbox. So we simply drag and drop this 91 pub up here in the Winbox area for files. Now here it is, the 91 pub. So let's go back to our list of things to do. We've created a text file, 
copy and paste it into the key data. We renamed it to pub. We copied it to the router using Winbox. Now we're going to associate the key with the username using Winbox. So go back to Winbox here. We're going to select System, select Users. We're going to use this guy right here, but you have to click on this SSH, SSH keys, first of all. So we've done that. We have to import a key. We've got to tell it we're going to do the Add User. Then you come down here and select the key. Make sure you got the one you, you expect to be using. And then you have to import that key. So now that username is associated with that key. That's what makes this all work. So at this point, we can go ahead and close that list. Go back to our do list over here. Associate a username with, I'm going to change the key size to make sure it's 8192, because there's like six different sizes it could be. So to do that, we come over here to IP, go down to uh, SSH. This key size is 8192. Also, always allow password on a login. We say no, we're not going to take passwords anymore on SSH logins. Allow none on crypto, no, there has to be a key file associated with it before we allow any login to SSH. Now, on the other hand, we still have our HTTPS login, which does have a password, but we're going to disable that service before we place this router back into service. That way they can't get on board that way, they can't get on board through any other service. We'll just leave only SSH running when we're finally finished configuring this router. And that will require a key to access any configuration of the router in the future. Okay, the next step is to test the SSH key operation. This step right here, number 10. So to do that, we start up PuTTY, the real PuTTY. And we go over here and we have to deal with SSH by clicking on that. And then the authority, who's the authority for this SSH connection? We browse and go find wherever you placed your authority. Mine is right here. This is my private key. That's my authority. Then we go back up to our session. And the host name will be that username, which is add user at 68.88.1. And we know this will most likely work, so we're going to go ahead and save this session. Got to save that session. Now we're going to try to open it up. And you notice what it's asking for. It's asking for my passphrase. That's my own computer, my local Windows computer, saying I need your passphrase before I can handshake with that router out there. So I'll put in my passphrase. Hit enter. Now we're logged in. We logged into the router. We did not use any router password. So no one can log into this router now with SSH unless they have this private key that I have. And they also have to know the passphrase of my private key. So at this point, it's very secure. Let's go back to our list. We passed the test. Now, if you want to back up the router, you want to do it with SSL enabled and SSH enabled. The reason is, if you ever lose your private key, you can't ever get back that configuration. There's no way back with only SSH service without the key. So what we recommend is that when you finish all the configuration changes, you back up this configuration with SSL enabled. And then before, before item 12, before placing the router back in service, disable all services except the SSH. Using your Winbox to disable those services and then exit Winbox, and now you're, you're out. You're not going back unless you have SSH with that private key. So step 13, let's say that you want to go back in and change some stuff. So to re-enter your router configuration, use PuTTY with your private key, and then enable Winbox service. You want to use Winbox to make your changes, but you can't do it until you enable the Winbox service. So this, this line right here through your terminal will in fact enable the Winbox service. Now you can use Winbox to make all your changes. When you finish these changes, go back and repeat steps 11 and 12, which is the backup considerations. Now let's say, for example, that you lose your private key. 
somehow you destroyed it, got deleted, lost, whatever. Item 14 is if you lose your private key, reboot the router to factory settings. Then log in with Winbox and restore the backup. Then reboot the router again. Now you log in with Winbox because now we have the Winbox service enabled. So you log in with your Winbox and uh, fix your key problem. Go delete keys, install new keys, whatever it takes to fix your problem. Then you repeat steps 11 and 12 above to back up for the next time you have to get in there. And last but not least, if you're not using Winbox, let's say you're just using the browser here. If you're using a browser, then instead of, if you're not using Winbox, instead WebFig, then change all above Winbox references to with WebFig and change all above Winbox service statements to www.ssl service because that's what you need to get in with your browser. This concludes this video. I hope it serves you well.